Creatures, Creatures and Haunts. Oh my! <laughs> uh, today we will be talking to Allison May, um, most recently from Otherworld mm -hmm. in Columbus. She's actually been to a few other haunted places and stuff like that she's worked at, but uh, we're going to talk to her about what she's doing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and before I begin the video, just um, keep in mind, we did recently start a Patreon. If you can go over and at least check that out, you know, anything you can do helps. It starts at just $5 a month and goes up to a maximum of 20 right? Yeah, 20, 20. Um, And You know, and the higher the tier, the more you get. Um, one of the things you can get is um, Kim makes these uh, cards, and we would send them to you along with possible other goodies inside of those cards. Um, for being on the $10 a month tier, which would be the silver tier, and there's more goodies for the gold and platinum tier. Just again, if you could please check that out for us, um, that would be awesome. And if you're able to give us a little bit of money each month, that helps us just continue to make videos and all of that. But that being said, um, we will get right into the interview with Allison May. All right, so here is our special guest. This is Allison May. Um, she is from Otherworld and a few other interesting places. So welcome her to our little group. Yes, welcome, welcome. And um, yeah, so that's just a brief introduction. If you just kind of want to, you know, I guess we'll start. You can introduce yourself and kind of just explain what Otherworld is for people that um, have no idea. All right, uh, so Otherworld is, uh, we consider it like a new kind of art entertainment experience. Um, it's a 37,000 square foot interactive art exhibit. Um, so it's kind of like large Burning Man styled exhibits, haunted house styled uh, sets, uh, like a children's museum interaction base. Um, it's, it's a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, <laughs> I will say, you know, I've talked about it to a lot of people and they're like, what is it? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, like, I want to say it's an interactive art exhibit, but I yeah. feel like that's not, that doesn't put the right picture for in people's head. And I'll be like, have you heard of Meow Wolf? Which, you know, I haven't even been to, but that's like the closest thing that I, yeah. I, I know of, um, you know, and they're like, no. And I'm like, oh, just go there. It's fun. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. So also, uh, another one that, uh, like our my coworkers have kind of used to explain like when I was building it I had no idea what I was doing at the time uh, so one of the things that they would describe it as is sort of like a city museum in St. Louis which I had actually been to when I went to Transworld a few years back uh, but had no idea what I was doing mm -hmm. uh, I actually was like going through photos in my phone and had seen like a location stamp in St. Louis and it said city museum and I was like oh and it's like this place with large jungle gyms and, and, and large scale art that you can, it's like a giant playground basically. Yeah. I think I've seen one of the bloggers that I watch, like carpet bagger or something. I believe I've seen yeah. go to that place. Yeah. That place, um, that place looks like a lot of fun. How did you like get involved with other world? Okay. So, um, I have a, a friend who I had worked at several other haunted houses with Ralphie. He currently works at carnage. Uh, he was working at other world and, uh, just gave me a call one day and, um, was like, you need to come check this place out. It's basically a set design, a set designer's wet dream. And, um, yeah. I looked up the website immediately put in an application and, um, emailed and emailed quite a few times and then he told me one day to just show up and like find the owner and I did that and then got an interview and uh and just history from there right right um I don't know I really like I really like going to the place and like we have to make yeah. it back this uh this year as well so I mean like so so you said that's kind of like that's like mainly what you did you said then is you or do as you um like help make like the sets and design them or um, sorry, <laughs> just checking stuff out. Um, no, so uh, I actually have done a lot at Other Worlds. I started as a production assistant where I joke that I was basically everybody's bitch. I do all like the hunt. <laughs> uh, I want to say I do all the hard labor, but it's really all hard labor. Um, but uh, it started with just like assisting people on different projects that they were working on, uh, and then um. Uh, it sort of developed more so into like I, I did get to work on things solo um, and more recently um, 
well, right after we opened, I uh, applied for a supervisor position as when they posted it, thought that would be interesting to get into like the operations side of things. Uh, Cause at the time, like we were pulling back from building so much and adding on to it. It was more of just like repair work and things like that. So I uh, got involved with supervising and, um, you know, just did that for quite some time and uh, saw a spike there uh, in business towards the holidays. And then of course uh, the coronavirus uh, happened and I had taken on a lot of work around that period of time. And then uh, in, we all got laid off in March and then in May, uh, they ended up calling us back and now I'm the operations manager and I still help out with build a little bit, but um, primary and operations at this point. So operations manager, like what exactly? Uh, so as operations manager, I'm basically uh, the operations director's assistant in a way. Um, <laughs> I just oversee the operations of other world while, while we are open. So uh, working with our operations staff and uh, our operations supervisors and making sure everything's running smoothly and we're doing all the stuff that we need to be doing. Okay, okay. Um, you know, oh. <laughs> um, she's a, a little stray who just kind of found me uh, during the, the shutdowns actually while I was gardening, and now she lives with us. So hey, that works. Aww. Hey, that's nice. That's really nice. Um, I was going to wait till later, but you you brought it up. Like, I mean, that place, I imagine, with you know the coronavirus and everything, has to be very it has to be very challenging. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> It had to make it really challenging to run that place. I mean, you know, what what's that been like? Because um, I mean, like with a place that's literally about being interactive. Yeah. Um, so I, it's definitely been difficult, but um, it's it's been easier than I've expected. I don't. We just naturally have done all of the mandates and things that they've set in place. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's it's just about following the rules. I think. Uh, so it. I don't know. It's been easy. It's been hard to deal with people who don't want to wear masks. Um, yeah, you know, it's been hard to get hand sanitizer, <laughs> um, but everything else, like putting six foot distancing markers in place, um, spacing out our, our um, you know, guests, we have experience monitors, which were a thing before uh, the pandemic anyway, so they help monitor social distancing. Um, we have three different touch points in the beginning, so like you get your temperature taken at the front door. Um, and then uh, you go into, up to the box office to get your ticket scanned in. And uh, we say a few things there on how to explore. And then you, uh, <clears throat> you end up at what we call the exhibit controller. And that person basically is just telling you you have to wear your mask. You have to stay six, six foot distance. Um, but yeah, uh, right before the pandemic, uh, like I had mentioned, uh, we had seen a huge spike in attendance and um, we had we had discussed doing time ticketing um but it wasn't in place yet right um but thankfully two weeks before the pandemic really hit the fan uh we had put in put uh time ticketing into place well that's so, convenient uh, you already that, have that system yeah, yeah. that made things yeah. super super easy really uh so we distance uh groups everyone's you know spaced out um so yeah, it's not, it's not been terrible. And honestly, that was sort of how I looked at haunts. I'm like, it's all like, they have all of the information out there in front of you. You just, it, it's in a lot of different places. Um, but you're, if you're, you know, in it, you, it's, it's not that hard to find. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think haunts, you know, some their bigger thing, the, the thing that's really challenging for them is obviously the actors. You yeah. know, and like how to manage that, especially it really sucks. Our biggest thing this year that sucked is, you know, no place was allowed to do touch haunts anymore. And that was always like my favorite. Mm -hmm. yeah. My favorite haunts is the ones where they can like grab you and all of that <laughs> stuff. But yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess following into that, you know, obviously you have a big background as we kind of earlier mentioned in uh, the haunt scene. What, yeah. like, what, got, what originally got you into, because obviously you're very much into it. You've worked it three on the top of my head that I know, and I'm sure there's more, um, but what kind of got you into that? Uh, so I just, you know, really liked scary things, paranormal stuff, um, the aesthetic of it, and just scary movies, all of that, and moved into Brilliant, and uh, that's where Wells Township is, and uh, 
I would like hang out outside of the haunted house and like watch the actors like back then put their makeup on. They would just like have paint trays outside on a picnic table, like putting just like black makeup on their face or like fake blood. And I would just hang out uh, and like probably bother the heck out of them. Um, but finally, uh, I, I had been asking, I think for maybe a year or two to work at the haunted house and I wasn't old enough yet. I was still really young. Um, and I was out one year trick or treating and I had a mannequin head. My mom was in hair school. So we skinned a mannequin head and like gutted it out. And I was like so small at the time I could wear it as a mask. Oh, geez. And I was trick or treating in that, uh, in, in like a wedding dress and stumbled, stumbled into, uh, Sean and he was like, who is this? You have to work at the haunted house. And I was just like, oh, finally, like oh. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to ask me. And, uh, I ended up starting, uh, I think it was, it was in May that year. Uh, it was Midwest Haunters Convention pre-bus tour. It had come through in June. So I think it was 2009. Um, and then pretty much it's, it, it just was there on out haunted houses all the time. I was at every work detail I could possibly get to. Um, and I just wanted to be involved in every way that I could. So yeah. Oh yeah. It just, Hook, line, and sinker. Right. <laughs> yeah, most people that are involved in it, it's kind of one of those things where they don't like and they don't do it again, or they're just it's kind of like becomes a, like a lifestyle. Oh for yeah. For sure. Um, in saying that, I need to get I need to get Sean on here. He'd be fun. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean, what was it like working at like Wells Township when you actually got into it? Because it seems like such a um, and for listeners that like you know don't know, basically every year they like for the most part completely redo the place. It just seems like such a hectic uh, <laughs> environment. Like fun, I, I would probably, but. <laughs> uh, hectic, definitely. And I think that's why I loved it so much. Yeah. And that's something like I even, I know now, like when Otherworld is slammed, I am my happiest. <laughs> um, but uh, it was working at Wells in the beginning and like up until now, like I still do stuff there is still really, really fun. It's a, a big family environment. Everyone's welcome. And, and just like being able to do something different every year is also very rewarding. Um, right. you know, cause you can just, it, it's something different. It's not the same thing. It's not, um, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, you know, always something different and always different people there's people in and out of there all the time and then there's also like the same um core team that's been there for a really long time um yeah 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 we didn't we didn't uh, end up going this past year um so i'm excited to um cause there's so many we wanted to get to and a lot we didn't get a lot we didn't even get to get to this year but um i'm kind of excited to go back in this year in 2021 because uh since I wasn't there last year, I suspect that almost everything, you know, will be different. I mean, do you still try and make it out there at least once a year? I do, definitely. Um, so I, I didn't, of course, get out last year. So um, there, was, there wasn't much that I had done. But prior years to that, there was always... Uh, I was always there, at least during the season, if I could be. Um, otherwise, there was a room that I was doing um, there over the summer. And then I would be acting in a different place. Um, but yeah, I definitely try to get out there as much as I can, uh, even just to go down and hang out or go down and work on a project with somebody. Anytime I can get out there, I, I, I try. Right. So you said that. So like, is Otherworld like really the only like main place you focus on, or is there still like haunts and stuff uh, that you're like helping out with and stuff currently? Uh, so Otherworld has been my primary focus, and it, it, it more so uh, during you know, 2020 than before. Um, before when I was still like doing production artist work and uh, just supervising, I was still out face painting for fairs. I was still doing work at Wells um, and I was also doing like charity pop-up haunted houses, um, which is my objective for this coming year. I'm involved in two current charity haunted houses potentially and um, you know, the other world. Okay. So with that, um, with being a haunt actor and everything like that, uh, what influences you with, because I know you have a, quite a few different number of characters that you've done, and uh, what what influences you to become those characters? Uh, 
honestly, like whatever the scene or the environment or the year calls for and whatever I'm feeling. Um, but to embody those characters, I just use my anxiety. <laughs> um, so it, like doing stuff like this isn't as easy as just like hopping into character because I can take the jitters and like just get into it. Um, but I don't know. Uh, you know, just the environment, I guess, gets me gets me into it. Um, character development hasn't been like huge, a huge thing that I've involved myself in. It's definitely something I've, I've done. Um, but yeah, just whatever, whatever it calls for. So I, I've more recently done Blanche and Blair. And um, that really came from um, more of a, a personal uh, issue that I was going through. Um, so I was diagnosed bipolar, um, but after so long, I don't actually think that I am bipolar, um, but I was on all like medications and stuff like that and really like going through some, some tough times and, um, Blanche and Blair, one was an evil bitch and one was just a psychotic clown. And, uh, I just embodied that, I guess, and went yeah, no. with it, um, yeah, <laughs> I think now I would go for more like a silent looming character because I'm more like pulled back and trying to like better myself and learn more about myself. So, right, it's kind of funny, yeah, how like we change and stuff. And yeah, I guess it would like as you personally change, like the characters that you might develop, um, you know, to act as or become, I guess, would also yeah. just reflect your personality, you know? Yeah, um, haunting has always been like an outlet for me. So, mm -hmm. if it's you know. It's, it's just going to, I'm going to reflect what I'm feeling onto what I'm doing. Um, I see that with all work now, actually, like the way that you feel and, and the way that you're working with, you know, your environment and yourself and trying to improve, that's going to affect everything that you're doing. Right. Yeah, for sure. And I'm going to get back to other world in a minute here, but just out of curiosity, like as far as haunting goes, what is your, there's so many aspects. What do you personally like the most about, like, do you like the set designs? Do you like the acting, scaring the crap out of people? Like what, if you had it's to tough. pick one thing? <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a tough question. Cause I, I feel like over the years I've dabbled in a little bit of everything. Yeah. That's um, why I figured, cause since you've done so yeah. much, cause a lot of people we've talked to is like, they're an actor or they're a set designer. You are kind of a yeah. jack of all trades. So if you could yeah. only pick one thing to do, you could only do it again. What would the thing be? category wise i wouldn't be able to pick one uh but it would be set design and operations yeah i kind of um, yeah that but seems like, actually you know. so uh one of the roles that i played at um wells towards like my uh more recent roles uh when i was there for a full season or two seasons or even when i'm just there during season i'll still hop back into that role i'm in character but i'm working with the actors training them so even if i was doing operations if it wasn't like you know a customer face where i need to be dealing with like customer complaints or something like that i would be in character and i would prefer to be in character because i'd be able to work with the actors and i'd still be able to manage properly but then like if i'm in plain sight i can still snap into it and right. it's also easy to train actors when you're in it yourself in my opinion but. i feel like working with the public as much as i have too it's it's a lot easier to deal with people if you could pretend to be someone else yeah <laughs> that, that's yeah, definitely true because sure. it's yeah. so awesome if like your character is you know like um if, if your character's a crazy bitch you get to be a crazy bitch to people you can't go to your day job and do that because you'll get fired but at a hundred <laughs> what other place yeah. can you be mean to people you know and like that's what you're supposed to do true like, <laughs> yeah that's um, that's just awesome but for sure. All right. So anyway, so back to other world. Um, th some of these questions are going to be things that I've kind of <laughs> wondered as well, and I don't know like if there's even answers. Like, what is the storyline of other world? <laughs> I, I know okay. there's not going to be a great answer for this, but I think there is <laughs> yeah. one at least loosely. And and honestly, it is very loose. Um, but I I've honestly like never been the greatest at telling this, or I don't think that I am. I should definitely get better at that but um <laughs> other world industries is you know like a giant science lab and uh you as the guests are coming in as beta testers um and you know uh other world industries is uh basically harvesting uh, dreams and okay. uh if you didn't notice something had went terribly terribly wrong um and the the dream realm and the real world but in other world industries have combined um, and now it's just other world. I, 
there's a lot of different things going on there. Um, there's little pieces of storyline in different areas of the exhibit. Um, and it, there's, like I said, very loosely, and, and that's done on purpose um, so that the guest can sort of, you know, make their own assumptions and gather their own pieces to build their own story. That's that's part of the whole ordeal. But there is, you know, that, that basis of other world industries being a science lab, harvesting dreams. So there's, um, you know, the room where the, the um, there's like three, we call them super pods. Um, and then there's like a mm -hmm. giant ball hanging in the ceiling. You step in all three and like the whole room will give you a light show and, and there's an air blast in those. But those are like basically where they were harvesting the dreams. Oh, okay. Um, so, so different scenes like that will pull those pieces together. Um, but all of the different computers um, in the exhibit all of that information in there is part of the storyline. So if you sat there and watched every little piece of footage, read every little word, um, you would have a much broader understanding of the storyline. Um, but that's basically it. And it is a place where I think you could go and just spend like <clears throat> so long oh, yeah. if you really wanted to soak in the details because there's so many things that um, – like I wouldn't have realized, you know, with this, um, why well, I, maybe I would have, if I would have explored more, but you know, just kind of being told like all like the little secret things that there are and stuff, Yeah. which I really liked that that's there because it gives you kind of like almost a mission, um, to kind of like find the things and it gives you a reason to explore mm -hmm. even more than you already yeah. would just to see the stuff. Yeah. Um, and I guess what on earth, like, in like, oh, there has to be something like what, how do you guys go about like creating some of these rooms? Because some of the ideas are so outlandish and I'm just like, man, I don't know if I could like actually think of some of the stuff that's been done. Like, I'm like, it's so creative and, uh, well, I mean, not to be punny, but otherworldly. And it's just yeah. like, like this came out of someone's mind. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I haven't you know, totally been a part of the design aspect and coming up with the ideas. Right. Um, I, I get to throw little things in there here and there sometimes, um, but the, the storyline's more so from the owner, the fabrication director, and the art director, and I'm sure other people. Um, there was a whole process, I think, in the beginning there that they were all just like brainstorming ideas for rooms, and it was just based off of that that basic idea of the dream realm and like a science lab. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Have you never seen them like whiteboarding or anything or just like? I see them, they sketch out ideas. The art director will sketch out ideas. Like um, we just announced this uh, in a magazine so I can talk about it. Uh, we're doing uh, a new room. Uh, we're calling it Utterworld. U D D E R W O R. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. And and in that room, uh, there's like gonna be it's it's gonna be kind of split into two, but there's gonna be some big corn stalks and as you could imagine, a cow deity. Um. I don't, huh. you know, like I don't. <laughs> that just sounds. I don't know yeah, what like, yeah. Come up with that idea. I would. Um, yeah. I, yeah. That's what I'm. I, I don't know either. It's almost like. I would really, I would really like to know what their creative process is, because right. um, that is interesting. Now, when you guys add a room like that, now does it take away from another room, or is there just more space where you're actually like building on? So uh, we identify areas that we think we're lacking in, and um, the room that this is going to go into is certainly lacking. Um, it's a giant black room, if you remember, and on the floor is like a light trail, and you just walk through, and it follows you on the floor. Oh, yeah, and the then, scary um, obelisk there's, room, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a giant spaceship in the back of that room that's just painted black that I worked on for weeks sanding so it could be egg shell uh soft and perfect and it was not and it was very difficult um but we're gonna throw that away and Aww. we're gonna put in outer world oh it's <laughs> i mean actually i mean that, i like that people, room though i like the idea of it the light falling around i mean i didn't even know it was supposed to be a spaceship i just call it the obelisk because it just looks like a giant black obelisk so you can like barely see and i don't know i actually kind of thought the idea of that room is kind of cool because it's kind of like it's kind of in a weird section too where like because it dead ends, I guess. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I feel like that's a room that, there's a lot of things in other world, I think, that could be easily missed. <laughs> um, and that's why, oh, like, you know, for any listeners or viewers going, like, make sure you explore the place because there's probably more than you even think there is when you first walk in. Like, definitely. there definitely, yeah, for sure. definitely um, is. Um, 
give you every little crack and crevice because we were like crawling into things and finding things. We're like, hey, look, there's something else back here. Right, yeah. Because <laughs> then somehow stuff, I, I assume, because like a lot of the stuff, like there's, there's alternative ways because obviously not everyone can crawl. And I assume that's why like... There's at least so that way because it seems like it would be handicap accessible for the most part. I would assume. Yeah, we we definitely are handicap accessible. Yeah, uh, so that, but that like is you're nice. saying, like, there's like five percent of the space uh, that has like you know um, crawl tunnels or little passageways that you would have to get down. But like you're saying, there are alternative paths to those areas. They're just those very small areas would be missed. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because there are some things that um. I think were there the first time we went that I didn't see until we went there the second time. There was mm -hmm. new stuff added as well, but um, I yeah. Visit Otherworld, it's really freaking awesome. It's right. always changing, so definitely you can come back uh, time after time and there will be something different for you to explore. Uh, we make changes you know, every week, uh, large scale changes every six months. And um, you know, we're always, it's art, it's never finished. Um, that's what I always tell people, so. Um, there's always going to be something new and different. Yeah, it's never finished, just like Disneyland, except with lots of weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more trippy. Oh, a lot more trippy, yeah. Um, oh, that's oh, that's another question, because um, um, I know that you guys there for a while were experimenting, like there was like a bar in Otherworld. Is that still gone, yeah. or is it brought back now? So the um, the bar, we only had bars during shows. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we did, it was a cafe and we did sell like coffee and tea and, and just, uh, you know, little drinks or whatever um, and like snacks. But um, now during the pandemic, we're just keeping that closed. It's easier to just keep right. it closed than I to have it figured. open, have people eating. Uh, we did like move snacks over to the gift shop area. Uh, and so just like candy bars and chips and things like that. Um, but we do anticipate that uh, once restrictions are lifted, mm -hmm. that the cafe will reopen and it will actually reopen as a bar for full time during operations. So you'll be able to drink, uh, you know, like a, a cocktail or something uh, while you're exploring. And I think that would be so cool too, because I mean, it's just the perfect opportunity to just make the weirdest drinks you can imagine. Like weird oh, yeah. molecular gastronomy things, like get someone that can do that. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that would even be, oh, yeah. God, I would just live there. <laughs> That would be but, fun, yeah. Yeah, the only bad thing is, of course, I mean, but this is something any amusement park or whatever it has to go through is, and you get the people that overdo it, and, <laughs> but. <laughs> you know, even, even without a bar being open, we still have, you know. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you no. do, but, <laughs> yeah. It's still under the influence of something. Oh, yeah, anytime you. So yeah, if you're if you're a person that goes to places, just be just be a decent human. That's that's all. Yeah. If you're going to a haunt, if you're going to other world, anywhere. How about just when you leave your house, just don't just don't be a scumball. Let's that can be today's lesson. Um, scumball. Yeah. It's don't do simple. that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think that probably wraps it up. Um, except thank you so much for uh, joining us in that. And yeah, everyone, please, I'll have a link to other world. We've also done a vlog on it. Um, we plan on um, doing another vlog this year later on in the year. Um, so you know if you. Great. I recommend if you can make it, actually don't watch it, go there. But if like it's far and you can't make it, definitely watch the vlog. It's from a couple yeah. years ago, so even if you do, there's still gonna be a lot of fun stuff to see. But um, yep, thank you so much. All right, well, thank you guys very much for joining us in this episode. And thank you again to Allison for being with us. Um, the work they do at Otherworld is absolutely amazing, and we said in the video, but I mean, again, if if you haven't checked it out, you know, please do so. You know, um, it, it's just a really awesome experience. One, there's not there's not many other places that are quite like it. As we mentioned, there's things like Meow Wolf, but I mean, they're just so far, and, you know, far and few between. You know, if you've been to one of those places, this is still completely different than that. That's yeah. just the closest thing we can use to describe it. Um, and again, you know, if you can't check it out, you know, we have that, that we have the, um, the vlog we did a couple years ago, and there will be another one in the future this year so you know make sure you're subscribed and um, have the notification bell so you see any future videos and all of that and you, if you're watching this and you're someone that would like interviewed have something that's like it's like that or a haunt or whatever you can direct message us leave a comment on um you know youtube i have all the links in the podcast um you know for youtube and all the links on youtube for all the social media and all that and again please just check out our patreon um but that being said thank you guys very much for joining us and we will see you all in the next